today I have a bunch of stuff to show you, so let's get started with the first item. We'll start with presenting these modules, for which I don't have their packaging anymore. Let's begin with this AD9850 DDS signal generator module. This signal generator module was uh, $9.29 shipped and it should do 0 to 40 MHz sine and square wave generation. Of course the quality of the output depends highly on the quality of the input clock and you can't expect it to perform very well towards the higher end of the frequency range. The chip has a digital interface that you connect to your microcontroller and through that you can control its operation. I plan on creating a small signal generator using this module and possibly upgrading its uh, crystal oscillator to a better one. However, I still have to figure out some, some output buffering and the way of controlling the output voltage level. Basically, just one of the many projects I have on my to-do list. The next item is a Bluetooth 4.0 low energy module which uses the CC2541 chipset from Texas Instruments. It is advertised as supporting the serial protocol, so I'm not sure it can do other protocols as well. You'll have to check the datasheet of the chip to see that, and probably it involves some custom firmware. I got this because it was very cheap for a Bluetooth low energy module at just $4.60 shipped, no specific project in mind for this module, but as I mentioned in previous videos, I like having stuff around for when I feel inspired, so I can just start prototyping immediately. Here we have another Bluetooth module, this time one that's specifically designed for audio designs like Bluetooth headsets, Bluetooth speakers and things like that. It uses the CSR8615 chip capable of Bluetooth 4.0 with mono audio output. It's quite a versatile chip, as mentioned, oriented towards Bluetooth headsets and you can clearly see that from its list of features. It has built-in lithium battery charger, audio decoding, audio DSP capability, echo noise cancellation algorithms, etc. This module was $5.50 shipped from AliExpress. Once again, no specific project in mind, just nice to have around in my parts bin if anything Bluetooth audio comes up and yet another Bluetooth module and I promise you this one is the last also audio oriented design this time stereo but working with older Bluetooth 2.0 this one uses the OVC 3860 from Omnivision uh, it also has built-in LiPo charger a stereo DAC output as well as a UART interface for comms However, as mentioned, only Bluetooth 2, which probably means not very power efficient when compared to Bluetooth 4. I ordered this from Banggood for $4.50 shipped. Next, we have this uh, through hole kit, which requires assembly. This is a frequency meter kit I purchased from Banggood for $7.45. It's supposed to measure from 1 Hz up to 50 MHz, which is quite okay for a DIY kit. So let's take a look at its PCB. It's very simple design. It uses just a PIC microcontroller to do the counting and display the value on these 7 segment LEDs which are connected directly to the IOs of the microcontroller. No custom display chip, they kept the design simple for the obvious reason of cost. I will assemble and test this in its own video which should be released soon. I only hope uh, the microcontroller is pre-programmed with the firmware needed for this to work. Next up we have another kit, this time a slightly more complicated one. This one even comes with instructions. This one should make an interesting assembly video. 
It is the LED Persistence of Vision Rotating Electronic Kit. It, it probably comes with all the required parts. It even has a, a plastic case. I see a motor in here. I see probably because there are some user comments on the product page that seems to indicate otherwise. But anyway, we'll see about that when I get to assembling it. I got this from Banggood for $10.80 free shipping. And it certainly looks interesting from a design point of view because it features wireless power transmissions. And that is from what I could understand from the product page. Unfortunately, very poorly documented on the Banggood websites. You get some pictures, a schematic and some user comments about the lack of documentation for this kit. I'm fairly confident though I can get it up and running, but I'll have to do that in its own separate video. As we can see right here on the main board, the microcontroller in its QFP package is already soldered on the PCB. So uh, I imagine it's also programmed. If not, we'll just have to search the internet and find the correct firmware for this kit and uh, upload it using an AVR programmer. Next up we have this white envelope. And inside we have this macro lens filter. This is for the camera I'm using to film these videos, which is the Nikon D3100. This one is the uh, plus 4 model and I also have a, a plus 10 model on its way. These macro lens filters will help me focus macro shots and as you've noticed macro shots are often needed when working with fine electronics. Not much more I can say about this uh, uh, product, just that you'll be seeing some uh, more close up quality shots of the modules I'm working on. Let's see what we have in here. These are some nice little voltmeters I got from Banggood. They were $2.95 each and you can get them in various colors, blue, green, red and yellow, as well as various input voltage ranges up to 200 volts. They use 36 inch 7 segment LED displays and they have separate power and sense lines. These are the kind of modules that can come in handy whenever you need monitoring of some DC voltage. You don't get a great resolution with just 3 digits so it's better to select the, the range that you exactly need for your, your applications to get the most of that range on the available 3 digits. Let me just hook up one of these to uh, my power supply to show you how it looks. Now, these as you can see they have three wires. I, in fact I have a, a two wire model and a three wire model. The three wire model uh, does have separate power so you can uh, power it separately from let's say a 5 volt line and have the measurement line go down below 5 volts. There is also a model which uh, doesn't use a separate sense line and it senses practically and powers from the same line. So with this model you cannot go uh, very low in voltage because you will go below the threshold at which the uh, module works and I believe that is uh, either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. So you cannot go below that in your, in your measurement. But with this one, which has separate power, you can power it from a stable 5 volt line and have your measurement go even below that. So I'm just gonna hook this up to my power supply. In this case I'm connecting both the power and the sense line together. So I just turned off some of my lighting in here. It doesn't look very uh, bright on camera, but it's a nice blue color, this model I have. And if I play with the power supply uh, voltage adjustment, 
you can see the meter probably has two updates per second and in this case because I have both the sense and the power line connected together I can go up to about 3.3 volts before the uh, meter turns itself off and of course the measurement is not very accurate when uh, it doesn't have enough voltage to run on Next up, next up I have this SMA male to BNC male coaxial cable or pigtail, whatever you like to call them. I got this cable from eBay for $3.19 and it's just a general purpose RF RG58 cable that will be added to my cable collection awaiting its use in future projects or measurements. As we can see here from the label on the envelope, I know we have a lithium ion battery inside. I've been waiting for this battery. It is a BR2-3A Panasonic lithium battery. And if you've watched my HP3478A teardown video, you saw one of these on the main board. This one is not open because it came from inside the uh, European Union and packages that come from inside the, the EU don't get open for customs. If you haven't watched the video with the HP 3478A teardown, click the link on the screen. As I was explaining in that video, the battery is used to store calibration constants in volatile memory. I believe my meter still has its original battery more than 20 years old, and since I plan on having the meter calibrated, I would also like to change its battery to ensure many future years of safe storage for the calibration constants. I got the battery from eBay and it was quite expensive at $11 shipped. It's likely that these batteries are uh, very rare these days and you can't find them anywhere. So that's why the, the prices are so high. It looks to be a genuine Panasonic made in Japan cell. So you will uh, see a video with me with the procedure of me changing this battery inside the HP meter. Next up we have this white envelope coming from Australia, not Austria. And let's see what we get inside. These are a couple of UID changeable MIFI cards which basically means you can write whatever you want to their UID section and people who have worked with MIFR cards before they know that usually the UID section uh, is fixed by the manufacturer these are different from the standard MIFR cards which have a fixed UID from factory so they come in handy when you're trying to copy an existing MIFR card with a fixed UID I wanted to play with this and uh, libnfc under Linux I'll probably even make a video with uh, uh, me working with libnfc under Linux if I manage to do anything interesting in there. As usual, the links for all the products are in the description below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.